Professor Bonnie Morris, in your book, Revenge of the Women's Studies Professor, published by Indiana University, I want to start with chapter four. I'm going okay. to read a little bit. Professor Morris, I'm really sorry to bother you like this, but could we talk privately for a moment? You see, I really enjoy your women's studies class. I do. I love it. And I want to finish out the semester. But my husband, he feels differently. He thinks it's a lot of radical ideas, and he wants me to drop your class right now. He just doesn't like me going out at night to take a women's studies class, even though it's just once a week, and I told him over and over, it does count toward me finishing my business degree. Mm -hmm. She then invites you to dinner at her house. She's older than you. And you write, and so I went to meet her husband and win his approval. I talked lightly about camping and hiking and movies while he stared at my bust over the spiced ham. Finally, at the end of the meal, he stood up to shake my hand saying, well, little lady, I thought I, I guess I thought you'd have horns on your head and come dressed in a suit of armor carrying a battle ax, but I reckon you're woman enough after all this. <laughs> this is a true story, and the book is based on my one woman play, which in turn is based on actual incidents uh, in my career teaching women's studies. And uh, when I was in graduate school, I was able to start teaching my own women's history courses. As soon as I had a master's degree, I taught night school. And the class, which was <laughs> a history of women in work, enrolled actual working women, many of whom were 36, 40. I was 23 at the time. And uh, these women were coming back to school. They were returning adult students. They had amazing stories. And what I was able to offer was a history of what they were experiencing as women in the workforce balancing career and family. But I did have a student who really had what I can now look back on as the hint of a domestic problem, and I really wanted her to stay in school. So this was an example of um, a husband who had a stereotype about what goes on in a women's history class, and I knocked myself out trying to win enough of his approval that he would uh, not uh, keep his wife out of class. Uh, that was in Binghamton, New York, and a time when there was, uh, as now, poverty and struggle, but a desire for education for many women. And unfortunately, then as now, women's studies or women's history is seen as controversial to too many people. What is women's studies? Well, women's studies, of course, is an effort to fill in the blanks of what we are not taught about in terms of how women have contributed to planet Earth. And uh, for the most part, uh, women's contributions to history have been overlooked or trivialized or they're simply absent. Uh, we learn about the history of great men, the founding fathers. Uh, that's all considered the public side of history and women are seen as the private side. Uh, people are very respectful of what goes on in the family, but what goes on in the family is private and somehow it's not seen as important. So because women are also traditionally uh, portrayed as modest or hidden, um, bringing attention to what women do or how women have contributed always returns to the question of the body. So uh, for one thing, uh, many people object to bringing women's studies or women's history into a middle school, high school classroom because there's an assumption that women's studies is only about sex, birth control, abortion. Um, and actually, it's also about uh, women in politics, women in law, women working on farms, um, queens, prime ministers. <laughs> and uh, my job is to break down the fear many people have. What goes on in a women's studies classroom? Don't you all sit around in a circle humming and giving each other gynecological exams? No. Uh, so I have students come to me thinking the class will either be radical or easy, and uh, they're horrified uh, to learn they have to take tests and write papers and that they can actually flunk uh, women's studies. So as the courses have gradually become mainstreamed, I now attract people who just want that uh, humanities credit and who think, well, this will be my easy class while well, I take my pre-med spring. And uh, many are the sad faces in my office. How could I possibly have earned a B? Like, well, 
you know, you really need to know the names of some of these foremothers. And uh, no, you didn't get that in high school. So yeah, you have to read the book. And um, one of the things I also do is I'm a reader for the AP US history exam. And uh, every June I read about 1,100 AP essays. Uh, and we do have uh, content on women's history that's part of standardized testing now. So now everybody has to know more women's history than they used to to be considered an honor student or to get advanced credit. Uh, that's elevated the status of women's history, but that has not eliminated the kind of questions and nervousness I encounter every semester with a lot of people. Professor Morris, in your, if you teach a freshman survey class, mm -hmm. let's say, mm -hmm. how many mm -hmm. men are in that class? That's a good question. Um, I do. I teach women in Western civilization. Uh, I would say it's about 10 percent. It uh, depends on the year. Sometimes in a group of 100, I'll have uh, 17 men, 12 men. Um, they are great. Uh, the guys are often some of the best students. Um, I can also say, interestingly, I tend to have a lot of international male students. I think uh, many of them have been pretty upfront about wanting to look at gender issues. They come from the Middle East or uh, Korea, Pakistan. Um, I've had students who have told me deliberately they want to take this class because it's the only time they'll have a chance. They won't back in Bahrain. Um, I've also had guys who are very upfront about being raised by single moms. They're very respectful of uh, what women have done historically or to keep families together. And uh, I also just have really smart guys who were political science majors or who intend to pursue careers in everything from justice to law. Do you have that student, that male student in the class who maybe sees this as a, as a has n more nefarious? Mm -hmm. um, sure, uh, have guys uh, raised their hand and objected? Uh, they have, but not any more than the women, actually. I have more uh, conservative women than I used to, in part, again, because the field uh, has been mainstreamed. We have people like Kay Bailey Hutchinson writing uh, women's history textbooks. So it's no longer considered uh, a brand of radical feminism to do women's history research, and that's a whole other topic. But it's also um, true that a lot of people are just shocked by what they're learning. They never learned that, you know, women couldn't do this until 19-whatever. They didn't know that um, uh, women were forbidden from serving on juries or at attending uh, Princeton until 1968. So uh, the result is a lot of folks will say, wait a minute, wait a minute, where are you getting that? And um, that's a natural reaction. But um, I would also say that once in a while we'll get somebody who is just very uncomfortable because the, the subject matter is painful. It's painful to look at the history of exclusion and assault. And uh, uh, so what I have to do as an academic is to say, in the discussion section, please feel free to respond as personally or as angrily or as emotionally as the readings move you. In the written work you submit, you have to be professional, scholarly, detached, empirical, reasonable. Uh, and so that's the deal. You can uh, say whatever you wish. All political opinions can lead to an A. You don't have to have one view. But I will evaluate your writing based on a good, you know, uh, scholarly style. And so uh, I teach many athletes. I also teach uh, uh, women's sports history. And sometimes the athletes uh, will use a little bit of <laughs> street slang. And I have to write in the margin, woo, let's find another word for this. Um, so it's really more about um, teaching folks to write about uh, personal history in a, a way that is um, professional and not so much people challenging me because they're horrified by the subject woman. What does one do with a women's studies major? Well, that's a, a very common question. Uh, the quick answer is law school. Most of the 
uh, students I've worked with who've been minors, majors in women's studies uh, go to law school. They do very well. Um, a lot of women uh, and men 